welcome to the Fintorn community's original garden, where 45 years ago we grew the giant legendary cabbages. Now, but 10 years ago, I was in the southern states of the USA and I heard tell there a folk tale that they claimed was an ancient story of their ancestors, but I recognised it straight away as a true story of the Findhorn Garden that migrated across the ocean. And now I would like to tell you the original story as it happened. For one day, Peter Caddy was here in the garden with his son Jonathan. And he said, Jonathan, I want you to go and get me the horse that is fastest from up the road at Brody. The fastest horse, Dad, said Jonathan. How will I know it's the fastest horse? Because, said Peter, if you go and get it, you'll be here, back here, before you've left. And Jonathan, true enough, he arrived five minutes before he left on the horse. Now, said Peter, you're going to have to go to the far end of our land. Take this turnip seed and plant it. Plant it, get on the horse and ride back as fast as you can. And whatever you do, don't look back. So Jonathan got up on the horse. He rode along to the far end, Pine Ridge we call it. He planted the little turnip seed. He jumped up on the horse, galloped as fast as he could. But behind him, he heard all these strange noises, this rustling, twisting, growing sound. And did he look back? Yes, he looked back. And when he looked back, all these giant turnip leaves wrapped themselves around him and began to strangle him around the neck. But, but he had his Swiss army knife in his pocket, like any good boy will, and he got out the turnip leaf cutting blade and he slashed his way through the growing turnips and made it back to the original garden, panting and puffing. So, Peter and Jonathan, they sat and rested for a few minutes. Did you look back, said Peter. I did, said Jonathan. I can tell, said Peter. Let's go and see what's happened. And they walked back along the road, and there they saw turnips, already growing up past the height of their head, the biggest turnips that you ever saw in your life. And the pheasants, there's a lot of pheasants along there, they were really excited too. They gathered round the turnips and they began to peck at them. And they pecked openings in the turnips and they pecked their way inside. They created rooms inside the turnips. They created windows, doors on an upper level to sleep on that they would flap up into. Roger Doudna, Roger the dude, he came along and he saw those turnips with the pheasants living in them and he said, barrel houses, barrel houses which by the miracles of digital photography you may any moment now see floating in mid-air above the original garden. And Roger, he took these whiskey barrels and with his chainsaw he cut a door, he cut a window, he made an upstairs and he moved in and lived. And that is how the barrel houses came to be in the Fintorn community. But that is not the story I wanted to tell you today, because I really should tell you about the cabbages. Now after the exploit with the giant turnips, Jonathan said to his dad, you know, I've never seen anything that big in my life grow so quickly. Ah, uh, said Peter, you should have been here back in the day when we had the cabbages. For the cabbages, we grew right here and we brought lots of seaweed from the coast and we mulched it up and we created a beautiful bed and then you planted a little baby cabbage. And it sprouted and grew, it slurped up that seaweed and Eileen would talk to it and Peter would talk to it and Dorothy would talk to it and we'd sing around them and they grew and they grew and they grew until one cabbage. It filled this whole garden. You see, this shed that we need today to shelter from the rain, we didn't need then. We just go and sit under a cabbage leaf. Well, those cabbages, they grew, but eventually we had to harvest them and eat them. And when we harvested them, there was a real problem because there wasn't a pot big enough to cook them in. So in those days, Pine Ridge, which I'll show you later, there was a big hill there 
a big hill and it was all clay. And Peter said, I said to the pottery, build me a pot as big as the cabbage I need to cook it. And they took that hill and out of it they made a giant, giant pot. But it was so big. And the cabbage was so big, we couldn't get the cabbage into it to cook it. So we had to turn the pot upside down. The whole community came up. We lifted the pot and put it on top of the cabbage. And then we built the fire on top of the pot to cook it. Three days and three nights, we stood there fueling the fire. The pot, well, the pot cooked as well, because it wasn't properly cooked in the kiln. And then the cabbage cooked. We sat down took the pot off it and had our harvest meal right here in the community eating cabbage. And there's so many different ways you can cook cabbage. We had roast cabbage and pickled cabbage and toasted cabbage and cabbage with peanut sauce and cabbage with cheese. And we lived on cabbage all the next year and the year after that and the year after that. Oh, said Jonathan, I wish I could taste that cabbage. Well, said Peter, you know, it may be 40 years ago, but there's still a jar or two of that pickled cabbage in the food shed. I'll get you some out for your dinner tonight. And so, if you ever come to the Findhorn community to visit, just say, you wouldn't have any of that magic pickled cabbage I could taste, would you? And I'm sure they'll get a little plate out for you to taste. And that's the story I heard in the southern states of the US that really happened right here in the original garden of Fintorn.